played it mean, Bowser. Hey, YouTube, I'm back again for another How to Play video, and today I'm very excited to teach you how to play Monopoly Chance. This is for two to four players. Age is eight plus, take about 20 minutes to play. And I have a two-player game set up, so first thing you're going to want to do is set out all the different little components and match them up to their different uh, properties, like so. Each player is going to take a colored stack of cards, shuffle them up, and then also one of these little building holders right here, and a player reference card. You're going to take all the cards with question marks, shuffle them up, that's called the chance deck, and then you're going to roll to see who goes first. High roller will go first, and don't forget, everybody gets a handy dandy little double side player reference now on your turn here's what you're going to do you're going to roll the dice and first things first if you get a question mark you're going to draw one of the question mark cards and you're going to do exactly what it says on the card they will do a variety of different things you can read the card however once you're done with that card you're going to discard the card and then you're going to roll once again until you get a number and yes if you continue to get question marks then you will continue to draw the chance cards uh, these question mark cards also if you ever need to draw a chance card and there are none there then shuffle up the entire pile and then draw one but let's see what happens when you get a number so if you happen to get a number on here like say for instance this three then that means you can draw up to three cards and you'll do this by flipping over one card at a time and as long as you draw, draw a bankruptcy you can then decide if you want to continue to keep drawing cards because this is what's called a press your luck game. So for this particular instance, we're going to pretend that Green said, you know what, I'm just going to stop. I don't want to draw one of my bankruptcy cards. I'm just going to take my 12 million and I'm going to place it somewhere on the board. You say cash out and then you take your card and you're going to place it on any spot on the board that has a property that you can afford to put your money on. So right now we have a 12 million, which means we can put it on any one of the spots. For this one, we need to have at least 1 million, at least 2 million, at least 3 million, so on and so forth. So the smart move would be to put it on boardwalk here. Now, why are we doing this? Well, because at the end of the round, if your card is on top of that property, you are going to earn these cool little buildings, which will go down here. And that is how you're going to win the game when you can completely fill this up. However, since the round is not over, we'll put that back and then it will move clockwise to the next player. So we'll take the dice and we'll pretend that blue has rolled itself a four and they flipped over an 11 million, they flipped over a three million, they flipped over a four million, and they flipped over a race car. For now, we're going to focus on the money. We're just going to put the race car off to the side. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll say that they're going to put the 11 million here. They'll put the three million right here for some reason and they'll put the four million there. Moving over to the green, we'll pretend they rolled a two. They flip over the five million. They say, I'm going to keep going. And they flipped over the bankrupt. And if you ever flip over a bankrupt card, then your turn immediately ends. And all the cards that you have drawn that turn go into your discard pile like so. Pass the dice. Your turn is over. You're going to continue doing these basic actions until at the end of someone's turn, all the spots on the board that are properties are covered. Next, we'll go to the green over here. Let's pretend they rolled a four. They flip over a three a 5 million and a 4 million and they'll stop right there because I want to show you how it works because you don't have to play on an empty property. What you can also do instead is you can play on a property with an opponent's card on it if you'd like or you could potentially even place it on your property if you just want to raise your bid because how this works is you could take someone's spot from them. So right now blue has locked down Kinetic Avenue. However, if I play a number that is higher than 3 million, I can take it over. So now green now has control of Kinetic Avenue. Let's say they also put a 3 million here, a 5 million there. They pass the dice. It moves over to this player. So this player rolled a five, they flip over a 10 million, and they flipped over a bankrupt. Now, since we drew this race car earlier, it doesn't actually go into our discard pile. It just stays where it was. However, if we had drawn it this turn and then gone bankrupt, all these cards would go into our discard pile. But we're going to pretend for the sake of this example that they didn't draw a bankrupt card. And instead, they drew the 10 million and the 5 million, in which case we're going to place those out. And now you'll notice that all of the properties are covered by at least one player's card, which means we have triggered the end of the round. Now, the round isn't immediately over. What happens is every other player, except for the player who triggered the end of the round, is going to get one more turn. So in this instance, since blue triggered the end of the round, green is going to get one more turn and then the round will be over. We'll pretend that green just immediately drew a bankrupt card, and then we'll show you how the end of a round works. It's really quite simple. You take a look out at the board, and for every money card that you have on the top of a pile, you're going to take that property's building. So, for instance, blue would get this building right here. 
they'd get one of these orange buildings right there, place it under there. They would get a yellow building, and I'm actually doing this backwards. You're supposed to start uh, on the left side and work your way all the way over to a 20, even though it doesn't really matter that much. And then blue would also get this green right here. Green, on the other hand, would have the blue, the purple, the red, and the blue. So you plot, slot those in like so, and then you're going to collect all of your cards from the board, from your discard pile. You're going to put them into your hand, and then you're going to shuffle up your hand to begin the next round. Which means if you have one of these fancy cards, you want to spend them before the end of the round. And to start a new round, whoever was next in turn order is going to start. So, for instance, blue triggered the end of that round, green took one last turn, so then it would be blue's turn to go first this next new round. And rounds are very similar from round to round to round. And that's what a round is going to look like. One thing I do want to mention is you don't actually shuffle back up the used chance cards in between rounds. So now let's talk about the special ability cards, let's talk about how you win the game, and let's talk about what these black buildings in the center are. So first, the black buildings in the center, they're really quite simple. If you ever get a Monopoly, aka you have two of the same building in your area, then you will gain one of these. So for instance, if this player got another blue tile at the end of the next round, they would get one of these and put it onto their skyline. Now, if you get a Monopoly at the end of the round and there's no more of those buildings in the center, how this works is it goes by who has the best Monopoly. So, for instance, let's pretend in a scenario that in a four-player game, uh, all the different players had Monopolies for all the different colors. Somebody has one for Baltic, for Connecticut, for Virginia, for New York, for Boardwalk, etc., what that would mean is whoever has the Monopoly for Boardwalk would have one. Whoever had one for Pennsylvania would have one. Whoever had one for Marvin Gardens would have one. And whoever had one for Illinois would have one. Meaning that you can potentially lose these. If you have one for Baltic Avenue, someone's probably going to steal it by the end of the game. Next, let's talk about the special cards in the game and what happens when you draw them. So first we have Flip 2. This one you're going to keep until you're ready to use. So you just set it next to your skyline remembering that if you don't use it before the end of a round this will get shuffled back into your deck but this one is going to force another player to flip two more cards which might potentially cause them to draw a bankruptcy that they weren't planning on getting and then they get nothing next we have the nope which will actually stop a flip too so this is kind of like a protective card or a cash card from covering a property you've claimed so essentially if someone was about to steal your pennsylvania avenue by placing a higher bid on that then you could play the nope cancel that out and the nope protects that spot for the rest of that turn so another player in a future turn could still take that spot from you but for this turn it is protected next we have lucky break which is going to protect against one bankrupt and it says at the bottom of all the cards when these cards take place so this card you discard at the end of the turn so if you don't use it on your turn then it just goes into your discard pile. And then we have the race card, which we, we drew a little bit earlier. And I want to mention that it's a race car for the blue deck. It's a hat for the green deck. Uh, it's a different thing for all the different colors. But they all have the same special ability, which is that you can play this card on any unoccupied corner space. And you can keep until you're ready to use this. So you can use this as soon as you draw it, or you could use it later on in a round, but, but make sure you use it before the end of the round. So now let's talk about the four different spaces around the outside of the board that you'll be able to use these cards. First, we have Just Visiting, which is going to allow you to play one cash card from your discard pile out onto the board. If you don't have a cash card in your discard pile, then you probably don't want to play there. Next, we have Go, which will allow you to look through your deck of cards and play one cash card from your draw pile onto any one of the properties. Next, we have Go to Jail, which is going to allow you to remove one cash card from the board from any single property. And then Free Parking, which will allow you to play one cash card on any property. So this has to be a cash card that you've drawn this turn, but it can be a lesser amount than what is already there. So let's pretend that someone had $12 million on Boardwalk. You could put a $6 million there if you played your race card or whatever card you have on the free parking. And another thing to note is that only one card can be on each one of these corner spaces. So if during a round someone plays the race car and free parking, the hat cannot also go there. They have to go to one of the other three spots. Another important rule to mention is that you cannot combine two cash cards. You could say, oh, this is 20 million right here. When you play a cash card onto a property, it can only be one card. One last situational rule I also want to mention is that if you've triggered the end of the round and then someone, say for instance, 
plays a card on the jail spot and removes your money from a spot, the round is still going to end like normal. That does not extend the round. But once a player has filled up their skyline or gone past the limit of filling up their skyline, they are going to win the game. Now, if there is a tie at the end of the game, the player with the fewest buildings in their skyline is going to be the winner of the game. But that's how you're going to play Monopoly Chance. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to check out that Amazon link down below. Also, be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I teach new games all the time. But go have some fun, and thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.